Well, hi guys. Welcome back to another episode of Eek Acres. Uh, the reason why I'm still wearing my hoodie is because it's been cold here, you guys. Man, the nights have been getting down in the 40s, and the high has only been in the upper 50s. It's just been ridiculous for this time of year. But anyway, I wanted to talk about something so you guys understand how it works when I do this when it, regarding camper building. This right here is the trailer that I bought last year so Bridget and I could move to this property so we didn't have to rent a U-Haul. And I said to myself, I, if I'm going to buy a trailer, because I bought this for $600 pre-owned, and I had to drive two towns away to go get this. Bridget has a hitch on her car, so we hitched it up and we towed it home. And I said to myself, if I have to buy a trailer to move with, then I'm going to make sure that the trailer that I buy is a trailer that would be ideal to build a teardrop on because I wanted one with big wheels on it, big 15 inch tires. Now 15 inch tires don't sound like a big tire compared to what's on modern vehicles today, but for a trailer, it's ideal. But I wanted to talk to you guys about how it works and how I think when I build a teardrop trailer. Because if I were to turn this into a camper like I did on the other frames that I built, this would be my sixth camper build, number six. This is what you have to take into consideration if you're gonna build a camper. Number one, you have to know what it's gonna cost. That's very important. And back when I built my teardrops, the price to build a teardrop on a frame that is a five by seven was $1,500. That included the purchase of the trailer. So by the time I purchased the trailer and I bought all my materials, which res resulted in my side rails, my rungs, my three quarter inch plywood, my insulation, my screws, everything to build the camper, the windows, the teardrop door, everything. Everything out the door, 1500 bucks, including the trailer. That was my all-in investment. Today, to build the same camper on the same size frame would be 3000 and that is if I could get good deals on stuff. It'd be $3,000 to build another camper. So there's number one, the cost. Number two, and this is very, very important. If you're gonna build a camper and you're gonna go all in and spend the money now that it takes to build it, number one, are you gonna keep it or are you gonna sell it and flip it? Because once you build a teardrop and you sell it, you can make three times your investment, three times. Maybe four, but that's pushing it. But you can make three times the amount. When you look at what brand new teardrops, factory built teardrops are going for today, don't take my word for it. Go on Google and just look up the different teardrop makers in Ohio, Indiana, Florida, Colorado, the different companies dotted throughout the United States that build these things and mass produce them look at what they're getting for them. Now, in this economy, people don't want to pay those exorbitant prices on a micro camper. So what makes these appealing when you build them from scratch is that number one, people are getting what they want, and number two, they're not paying anywhere near what these go for coming out of a factory. It's a fraction of the price. So the second thing about building a camper is after you know what it's gonna cost you all in with the purchase of the trailer and all the materials to make it out the door, a teardrop camper, number two, you have to decide, am I gonna keep it or am I gonna sell it? Because if you sell it, you're gonna get a return. You're gonna get your, your base back that it costs to buy it and build it, and then you're gonna have a profit. And that's what makes it worth it to build it. But if you're gonna keep it, all that goes out the window because now the 3000 that you got invested into your camper build 
is locked up in the build. You're not going to get that money back. So it's like spending $3,000 out there in the economy and you never get it back. So if you keep it, you got to be willing to spend $3,000 in this economy on something you're going to keep if you're not going to sell it. And if I were to sell it after it's built in this economy, it could take me a year or longer to sell it because the people that would have the money to buy it once it's up for sale and totally done, all brand new, those people that would have the money to buy it when most wouldn't, it's going to take a while for them to find it. And that's based on your advertisement. How well do you advertise the camper for sale? So the people that would have the money to buy it will find it, come and check it out, and possibly purchase it. So there's that. These are all the things that I'm very seasoned to. I've got experience with this because I did it five times. Like I said, this would be build number six. But these are the things that I think about. So I told Bridget, I says, you have to decide if I build this into a camper, are we keeping it or are we selling it? Because if we're keeping it, we're not getting our money back. Once we're 3,000 in, we're, that's it. We're 3,000 in. It's $3,000 sitting here in this barn. And this is why I'm on the fence and have been for a very long time. And I'm only making this video, you guys, so you understand why I'm on the fence and have been. I would love to turn that into a camper. But the thing is, is we have to decide are we going to keep it and use it when we don't even need it? Or are we going to sell it? Now, I would be quicker to build that into a camper if I was going to flip it. Because I know I would get my $3,000 back plus the profit. And that would enable me to put more into my savings. Now, the reason why we don't need it is because here in the back of my Sienna, I've already got a camper. I've already got a bed. I've already got something to go camping in. And this is safer than a teardrop because when my van got attacked at one o'clock in the morning at the trailhead down in South Valley, I was able to go from my bed into the driver's seat, start the van and take off. Because it's, it, it appeared I had a large black bear trying to get into my van. I never saw it. I just heard it and it clawed and scratched up the van. If I would have been in a teardrop, I would have been screwed because I would not have been able to exit the teardrop to get into my tow vehicle to leave. I would have had to go outside where it was. And that wouldn't happen. So these are the things that you have to think about if you're building a teardrop. Because back in the day, $1,500 investment was nothing. But now that it's double, I'm not so quick to say it's nothing. In this economy, $3,000, you guys, is, is a pretty good chunk of change and you don't want to piss away three thousand dollars in this economy if you don't have to because everything is expensive everything is through the roof and everybody's being careful with their money including Bridget and I so if I were to turn this into a teardrop and we keep it when we don't even need it I think that's kind of a foolish investment to put three thousand dollars into something we don't even need because I would rather camp in my van than the teardrops I build. And this is why I had no problem selling my teardrops. Every time I built one on my other channel called Tiny Teardrops, people would always say to me, Kev, are you gonna keep this one? You need to keep this one. Kev, keep that camper. That one's awesome. I love this model that you built. And I'd always tell them, no, I'm selling it because I need to get my money back and then the profit helps me build the next one because I didn't want to just be locked into that item and be out that money. I can't, I can't afford to be out the money it takes to build one of these things. So if I'm going to do it, I basically would do it to make a profit on it because I had no intentions of keeping any of my campers, especially now that I got a van to camp in. Right now, Bridget and I are mulling over the idea of building this. I have personally my own money to turn that into a, an off-road teardrop. I have the money to do it. It's in my savings, but that's my emergency fund for if something 
really important came up. It's not just to piss away on a toy to build a camper. So if we're gonna keep it, the only way that I could make the money back on the cost to turn this into the teardrop that it could be, if I'm not selling it and keeping it, would be if I generated enough revenue off the ads of the videos from the build series that this would create. So if I, if I had, say, 37 videos from beginning to end of turning this into a teardrop, let's say it was, I'm just throwing out a number, let's say it was 37 videos for the series to build this thing. If those 37 videos of however many people watching me turn this into a camper, if those videos as a whole didn't generate at least over time $3,000 in Google AdSense to build this thing, I cannot recoup my cost. So that means if I keep it, I have to recoup the cost of building this and turning it into a series solely on my ad revenue. Would this get enough views? Would enough people watch me turn this into a teardrop? Would they find it on my channel? Would they find the videos at all? If I knew I was gonna make at least my cost through ads to build this thing and then be able to keep it, I would absolutely do it. I would absolutely do it because I've got this huge pole barn to build this thing in with all kinds of room. And I have more room over there on that side. I got all kinds of room to build it in all weather. So what I'm thinking is if I build it, all I can do is hope that the, the ad revenue from the views of the build series would at least earn me back the cost to build it. Then I won't have to worry about selling it because I would recoup my cost. And then someday, if we don't want to use it or keep it, then we can sell it. When we're in a better economy with a better administration than what we have right now, because right now the economy sucks. It's the worst I've ever seen, and I don't need to tell you guys why. You all know why. But I wanted to make this video to explain to you guys how it works, how I think about it, how I go about it. Because if you don't take these things into consideration, you can end up screwing yourself in the end. You have to know what you're going to do with it, what your angle is. I can build them in 14 days. It takes me two weeks to build a teardrop from beginning to end. Two weeks. And with a building, I might even be able to do it quicker. This thing would make one hell of an off-road teardrop. I could put Jeep wheels on it, nice rims. I could even lift it a little bit because there are lift kits for these. Um, this would be a cool teardrop because this is the standard size trailer that I build my teardrops on. This is the same size. Only this one is a lot more heavy duty, very heavy duty. And this trailer tows beautifully behind the car. When we tow this thing, it's like it's not even there. You don't even notice it. There's no sway, there's no noise, there's nothing. It just rolls right behind the car like we're being tailgated by another car. It's an excellent trailer and I love the way this one tows. So when a camper's built on it, I know there's gonna be no problem. So that's why I'm doing this video to let you guys know where I'm at. What do you guys think? Because if Bridget wants to keep it, then I gotta cross my fingers and hope that the series of this build would at least earn me back through Google ad income the amount it costs me to build it. Because if not, and I'm out that money, without selling this thing. There's a lot of things I'd rather spend my savings on than something I don't even need. So that's why I'm just being careful, you guys. I'm being very careful because in this economy, you cannot afford to be foolish. You just can't, nobody can. And I sure as hell am not gonna do it. So if I turn this into a camper, so let me know what you guys think. Do you think it would generate that? Anyway, you guys, let me know down below what you think. What would you do? Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.